Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm Adam, of course. We got an interesting show for you today. It's a, it's a topic that I don't think is discussed all that often on the internets. And it's applicable here. It's, it covers a little bit more than just movies. It really stretches, I think, broadly to the entirety of the internet as a whole. Maybe even spewing out into the real world now after the last couple of years of nightmare fuel that was COVID and, you know, just everything that came from that. People have gotten even more reliant on online and online personas. And almost it's to the point where people spend more of their time on social programs, you know, social media sites, not social programs, I guess. But, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or the artist formerly known as Twitter called X. And less time touching grass, being in the real world, communicating with real people, having what I would consider real relationships. Now, I know that that might be insulting to some to say because some people have most of the relationships online and that's perfectly cool. That's fine. You do you. Uh, I just, I say tread lightly on that because you just really don't know that person in real life. How they present themselves online might be completely different than the person you meet in the real world. And you're kind of taking a chance on that but perhaps you'll never meet them in real life and that's fine then you're just you're just cool with this version you know this ready player one persona that you've built up and i don't think that this is going to change anytime soon i think we're going to keep getting further and further into this wally-esque digital space and so i just implore everyone to take a beat and maybe uh listen a little bit to what i have to say and and it might be applicable it might not And this is definitely springboarding off of recent events that I've dealt with on YouTube and X, the artist formerly known as Twitter and Instagram and, you know, all the social media platforms I have that I didn't even realize I did have until I got notifications from some of the gems in the community. Um, But everybody's been here and I think a lot of, again, I'm I'm pretty much nobody on the internet, but celebrities, uh, people of interest, uh, they, they get this on a day-to-day, thousands of times. And that's the hate speech. Communicating with a person in a way that you think is not a problem, and I'm not necessarily addressing you as in you, but other people. We're just saying you as in a a catch-all of sorts. But what I've seen is a big uptick over years in not just bullying, but these tribal ways of communicating with each other and attacking each other and pretending like it's some form of (laughs) like i don't even (laughs) uh, like it's some way of not retribution i guess is the word i'm looking for retribution a way of saying like you hurt us so we're gonna hurt you hey taylor swift you uh you pushed out your concert date now we're gonna send well i don't know if anybody goes after taylor anymore she's got an army of swifties at her side and i hear they're pretty deadly as well and that just goes to my my daughter loves taylor swift this will come back around believe me my daughter loves taylor swift she she's made a bunch of bracelets they're adorable she has like a taylor swift bookmark that features all her different albums she loves her she adores her she thinks she's great i don't love or adore anyone um to that degree obviously i love my kids and my wife and i guess i adore them because i know them on on a much deeper level and my mom and you know some of them i'm talking about people outside of my my sphere i don't love patrick stewart even though he seems like a really cool guy with a lot of great stories and i would like to meet him someday but i would never like idolize or worship him as a person. And I know that he can do wrong. He probably has done wrong. We all have at some point, but even Swifties can be vicious and they can attack people just for an opinion on Taylor Swift's music. Like, Oh, I don't like this song. And then boom, 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 boom. They're just destroyed by this little vicious army of girls and some guys, of course, some guys, I, I, I celebrate Taylor's entire catalog. What happened to me recently was I reviewed some movies over the course of this year. I'm not going to single out one individual movie, even though I think a lot of people in my community will know what I'm talking about. And every time I did one of these movies, a rabid fan base would come after me 
and demand I pull down my review that's on Rotten Tomatoes or pull my video off of YouTube or kill myself or call me a bad father or say I shouldn't have kids or, you know, there are all these disgusting attacks. These really personal attacks that go after my looks or my character or my... Actually, no one really goes after my looks. I think they know that that's, that's not a war they're going to win. I'm, I'm a god amongst men. But they go after other aspects of my life and it's pathetic. And again, I'm just getting a small fraction of what other people are getting. I know a good chunk of people even within my community on YouTube, other movie critics that I talk to... Week to week, we'll just check in. I'll say, hey, how's it going? You want to come on my show sometime? Uh, I'd love to come on your show. They'll invite me over. And we'll just maybe even just... Me I, I message a buddy from years ago who doesn't even do YouTube anymore, but I just like the guy. I've never met him in person, but he seems down to earth and reasonable. And he he was... I mean, I can say his name. John Paula. John Paula had a, a show called Movie Night. It was fantastic. He put in a lot of work on his reviews. He definitely knows his shit about movies. And we like to debate and talk about what's good. He likes movies I don't like and whatnot. And it's all very civil and fun. And, and we can move on as adults do. But they've all dealt with the same crap I've dealt with and other people online. And it's just sad that it's almost an acceptable thing now. Like, oh yeah, I put out a review of Star Wars The Last Jedi, not me, someone else, and I really liked it. And all these Star Wars guys came at me and just went off, telling me I should have my critic license revoked and I should never talk about a movie ever again. After hundreds of movie reviews of people agreeing with the person. Maybe not always, but most of the time. But then one review, just that that's the one that kills it all. And they unsubscribe and they call them a bunch of names and they, they post them on Twitter. They make videos about them or they, they show them in, you know, like compromising positions that they doodled in some weird program and then post it up. Just a bunch of fucking terrible stuff that no one should have to deal with. And I think it really comes down to accountability. Something that's always been a beacon of the internet after all these years is anonymity. If that's how you say that word, I can never say that word right. But essentially, you're anonymous on the internet. I'm not. I'm Adam Olinger. And Adam does movies. I put myself out there because I want people to know who I am. I want people to see the real me. And I am going to make mistakes. I'm going to get things wrong. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to say stupid stuff. I'm going to say jokes that don't land. And occasionally I'll put out a movie review that doesn't align with the general mass audience or even the small amount of critics that are currently reviewing a movie or a large amount of critics that are reviewing a movie. It doesn't matter. It's one guy's opinion at the end of the day. But does that mean I should get fucking destroyed over it and an angry mob should come at me? Of course not. The same way... Anyone I disagree with shouldn't. And this could be a generational thing. I think it is. I think that younger generations maybe are more just open with being kind of asses online. And that's just perceived as the new normal. And it's fine. It's not a big deal. It doesn't hold weight to them the same way. Maybe. I don't know. I'm in my 40s now. I'm 41. I, I was joking with a buddy of mine that... He and I and my wife and other people of our age group are daywalkers. We're like Blade because we grew up without the internet, but we're young enough where we're, we, we were the ones that kind of went into the internet and learned it on the fly. But since we are older, we're not growing up with kids who are on the internet and they're using it in a completely different fashion, in a different way. They're, they're more knowledgeable. They're quicker to the draw. They're sending out memes constantly. They know all the the new trends going around. Uh, and that, that there, there's just a disconnect there, I think. So when I'm told over and over again to kill myself or to seek another profession or when I'm completely misrepresented um, and, I, and I'm just, just false stuff is said about me, it's really frustrating to just keep my mouth shut and not want to fight back. Like, you didn't say a single nice thing about this. Well, yes, I did. I have video proof that I did. 
But what do you say to that? You just let them vent their misinformation? I guess so. That's what you have to do, right? I've seen tons of celebrities. I've seen fucking like billionaires online having petty fights with what's probably a 16 year old because there's that age gap disconnect where like someone like me, I want to fight and defend myself to the death over my own opinions because I know me more than 18 year old Derek does. Derek doesn't know shit about me. Derek probably doesn't know shit about anything. He's 18. He's got a lot of learning to do. No offense, Derek. You're, you're probably a very sweet kid. Young man, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. You're all kids at this point. And my point is this. I wish there was a way where we could have a conversation again without it turning into petty name calling, ugly arguments, bad faith dialogues. Just get back to basics. If you don't like a, a meal at a restaurant, which most people probably have experienced once or twice in their life, they got a hair in their McDonald's Happy Meal, or they had a burnt steak at a Manny's Steakhouse, you might take the meal back or never go there again. But since the internet came around, you can also go on their website and you can voice your complaints in the comments and bitch it out or go on another website and bitch out the thing what I hope people don't do, but they probably do, is they find the chef's account on Facebook or on Instagram and they start harassing the chef. And they say, hey, your meal sucks. You're a bad chef. You should quit. You should seek another profession. We're going to dox you. We're going to find out where you live. And they make these vague threats. Or honestly, people are so unhinged today. I don't even know if they're vague anymore. People are going nuts online. And it's, it's wild. And to say that they're just ad hominem attacks or they don't mean anything and it's all just for the, for the lulls and it's to own the person because they hurt you in some way by having an opinion that didn't align with yours or it came out too scathing or insulting or just so far beyond the pale that you have no other, re you have no other resort than to just keep hitting at them and going on all their videos and making mean comments just to take them down a peg because they're clearly too happy in life or they're too confident in life for you. I just, I don't, again, it's an age thing maybe, but there's also a bunch of middle-aged men that do this shit. They thrive on this crap. I've brought these guys up many times. I'm not going to go down this hole, but there's a sector of middle-aged dudes that just want to be mad about everything and like-minded ilk will go to their videos and they'll be like, yeah, let's stay mad at this. Let's, let's hate on this. Let's go after this and let's own all of these people. Just like stick it to them because then when it's all burned down, it'll get built up better. That's a big problem, I think. <laughs> and I don't know how to solve it. I stay in my little bubble, my little echo chamber with my cool movie friends it slowly grows over time and then I just keep doing my thing. But every once in a while, the dam breaks and a bunch of people I've never heard of and who haven't heard of me come over and they insult me, they belittle me, they uh, malign me, they say things that aren't true and then they just leave or some of them stick around, keep downvoting further videos, keep attacking and harassing in other videos that aren't relevant. And this, again, isn't just one time thing. This has happened several times over the course of this year alone. It also happened last year. And I know it's not just me. It's pretty much everyone in every fucking facet of the internet. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's honestly brutal. And I, I, I just, you know, I wish I had like a genie lamp. I could say, hey, could we, could we get back to a time where maybe people didn't have so much, uh, I don't even want, carte blanche, carte blanche access to be a prick? Like, is there some sort of accountability we can throw on people? I think it would be great if there was just even an age checker. I think that would go a long way. Just an age checker. So when Billy006942 comes on my channel and says, hey Adam, go fuck yourself. 
I can see that Billy's 15 years old. There's just a little age thing next to him. And I know that could, that could pose a lot of other problems, especially with the pedo community. So maybe we don't do that. But if there was just some way to have monitoring of these little shitheads and of these, I, I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. Obviously it's a problem. And we, as the human population have no way of resolving it or the, the smarter people than me, which there's a ton of them haven't figured it out. They've gone to the lab at YouTube and they're like, we don't know how, we don't know how to isolate this. It's just kind of the wild west out here. And I guess that's just how it's going to stay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I wanted to get this off my chest. I just wanted to have an open dialogue, kind of what's been bothering me lately. You know, I know, I obviously noticed that years ago, back when Facebook was popular for just kind of sharing pics of where you were eating at or where you were going for the weekend. And then it was like family photos. And then it was like, look at my baby. And then it turned into kind of like sympathy posting or feel bad for me all the time. And then it kind of turned into political Facebook. And now, I don't know. I haven't been on Facebook in years. I have an Adam Does Movies Facebook that I don't use. Sometimes Instagram posts to it when it feels like it, since they're both owned by the same meta company. I would assume it's just garbage. I, I would imagine it's it's just a complete shit show over there. And I don't know. Instagram seems to be nothing more than just promoting your own stuff at this point. TikTok is... Uh, one step away from being only fans as far as i can tell and youtube really seems to be prioritizing hot takes and outrage videos and that's probably why my most recent one got a little bit of notice a little bit of traction because of my hot take on godzilla minus one and a, a lot of that community you know blames me that i did it on purpose and i can i can assure everyone that that wasn't the case like i just i didn't really like the movie Obviously, uh, I'm in the complete minority as far as the people that have seen it so far. We'll, we'll see what happens when it hits a wider release. I've been in the minority a few times this year. That's not something I pride myself in. I don't. I have to pay for every movie ticket I go to. I don't go to Avatar 2 for free. So when I don't like Avatar 2 and it's three and a half hours long or whatever the fuck that was, that's miserable for me and I love James Cameron. I love all of James Cameron's movies, except for Avatar 2. And Avatar 2, I think, has a decent score on Rotten Tomatoes. Last Jedi, 90-some percent Rotten Tomatoes. Hated it. I didn't get attacked for that opinion. I didn't get attacked for the opinion about Avatar 2. And that video is titled, Avatar 2 Sucks. That's what it's titled. Because that's to pull people in that agreed with me. I'm actually trying to bring in people that have the same opinion. Where they saw the movie and they're like, man, this movie sucked. I wonder who else thought that. And then they type, Avatar 2 sucked. Oh, Adam does movies? Let's see what he has to say. Wow, he's in alignment with me. Well, cool. All right. Maybe we'll, be, we'll align on other things. And then if, you, if I can hit it with you eight or ten times, great. You know, if it's like an 80% batting average, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. I developed an app actually years ago because, uh, you know, believe it or not, this isn't my full-time job. And it was going to be this, it, it, it fell through, it didn't happen, which sucked because it was actually a great idea. But basically it was an app where um, you could find out who politically aligned with you based on a bunch of questionnaires. So essentially we presented a, we, we presented a synopsis of a bunch of bills on the local level and on the, on the statewide, le well, statewide, local, country level. And you would say yes or no if you agree with the bill. And after you went through like 10 or 20 of them, it would actually show you the person in your district, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, who aligned with you the most. So it'd be like, uh, this person was 70% aligned and this person was only 30% aligned. So you're like, wow, okay, cool. I guess this is the guy that I like. And I'm, I'm usually more in this party than this party. But in this instance, he seems to be the one that would get things done that align with me. And that's how I think movie critics, movie criticism is. You just find a person that you can relate with. Uh, some people give me shit because my uh, my reviews are too free flowy and too broish and too surface level. Or well, 
The surface level one I think is funny because it's a spoiler free review usually. I don't do a lot of spoiler breakdown videos. So I am trying to be surface level. I'm trying to be vague and respectful of the person that's watching so I don't ruin anything major. Because as a, as a movie fan myself, nothing pisses me off more than getting something ruined ahead of time. Um, but yeah, I'm not an analytical channel. I like to talk to people the same way that I would talk to friends after I get done watching a movie. And that might be a little bit on the juvenile side. I don't, I don't have a lot of friends that, well, I don't have a lot of friends in general now because we moved to a different state and I don't know a lot of people here and that's okay. But I don't have a lot of friends where we're, you know, having these like deep, really, um, really hard hitting constructive conversations with a bottle of scotch in our hand around a fireplace. No, it's, it's pretty much like, man, that movie sucked or wow. I wish that movie ended three hours faster or man, that movie was kick ass. It was great. It was epic. You know, just kind of your, kind of your basic, uh, basic terms that everyone uses. And I think that's fine. Uh, you can take it as far as you want. There's plenty of other YouTube channels that go, go very deep into things. They're very well constructed, well thought out to these 20 minute deep lectures into the, the, the fabrics of Hollywood and how the conversation has changed and shifted. And I'm not interested in that. I don't have time for that, <laughs> but I wish people had a little less time as well to be assholes online. It's one thing. And I will always say that it's the, it's the reason I had movie feuds as my main and only show for a long time in the channel, because I love debating movies. I love it, but I don't think it's valuable when the only debate is you suck or your criticism sucks. I would never. And the last thing again, it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just how I was raised, but I don't go on people's channels and say, you suck or this was a terrible review. I just leave or I just note it like, yep, that was a bad take. I don't need to hear from this person anymore because they don't sound like they know anything or man, that was a bad take, but I kind of like this dude and I like his energy. Let me see what else he has. I've actually done that a few times. Jeremy Johns, I remember watching a couple of his videos and not agreeing with him, but he had a fun energy to him. Even Angry Joe back in the day, I used to love his video game reviews, but I thought his movie reviews were pretty terrible. But I like the guy. He's funny. And of course, Red Letter Media, those are a big one for me. I'm a big fan of them. Although I haven't watched any of them in a long time because I'm just focused on my stuff. And I don't want to, I actually don't want to get any of their, you know, their thoughts mixed in with mine because I want to leave a movie and I want to present it. And then maybe I'll check out what other people are saying, but there's just not much time anymore. Anyway, I'm trailing off all over the place. I just wanted to bring up the conversation of maybe conversing with each other, adulting better with one another. And maybe, you know, there, there's some solution out there that I just haven't thought of that you have. I would love to hear it in the comments below. Do you know, do you know the recipe to get people to stop being assholes to each other? To maybe have a grown up dialogue, to maybe f check their facts ironically before telling other people to fact check. That was a, that was a big one I liked in this, in this Godzilla review. Like this guy knows nothing about, uh, the history of Japan. Like, 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 I don't know about world war two or ground zero or any of that stuff, but it, it was like, he doesn't know anything about this. And then they'll go ahead and say something completely infactual about me. It's like, um, I actually didn't like that movie that you said I liked. Maybe you should check it out. I'm not a Disney shill. I'm not a Marvel shill. I actually hated a lot of the recent movies. I take it movie to movie. I don't care what company puts it out. I care about the end product. Okay. Those are my thoughts. That's my little spiel, my little rant, whatever you want to call it. Let me know in the comments below. If you're on Spotify or Apple podcasts, thank you for listening. Keep it up. I appreciate it. Share it around. If you can, I'd like to have the podcast grow more by 2024. Let's keep it, keep it cooking up in here. And thank you for all the support this year on YouTube, especially during those live streams that I post Tuesday nights and Friday nights. They've been a blast. They've been spicy lately, but they've, they've also been awesome and eye-opening for me, just seeing how great the community has been. All right, with that, I'm out. See you next time.